French Polynesia, Tahiti tourism. Planes are expensive to get out there. Everybody, everybody seems to like Bora Bora. White ways there. That's probably clear call. Let's we'll see who it is. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, you're lucky. Have you really been talking to yourself for six hours, Daniel? Se seven. My God. What have you and been saying uh, to and, yourself? Well, because this is my, uh, this is the last I have a stream yard until the 22nd. So if I go off the air, you know, it's, it's just, uh, Nobody here. Yeah, I wouldn't talk to you, but uh, you know, you're the only one here. You're lucky. <laughs> You've been calling to me for all this time, but here I am. Oh, well, you no, have I, have been call, I have been calling to you, but like I said, you're, there's nobody else well, to talk well, to. You. Yeah, I, I, I know. You know, because if 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 you end the stream, then then you're 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 back to zero. And you're kind of until the twenty second of this month. Yeah. 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 So, um, I, which is I, okay. I, which is okay. I can spend the time doing other things, but mm -hmm. I do, you know, since you, I have, you don't want to waste the opportunity, right? Yes, <clears throat> I understand. So, so I so the the uh, the theme of the show was the fact that I've gotten all this obstruction to the DNA Nations project. I, I explained some of the uh, the characters involved in that obstruction. They're just stupid objections, and my. Um, arguments with them over these uh, months and years. Um, well, so, the, the, who, who have you been arguing with and what, what about? Uh, Otto Pohl, <clears throat> Matt Parrott, um, James Bowery, um, not really arguing, but not really um, making it happen fully with Kevin McDonald. Um, Oh, oh, tell me about Kevin McDonald. I, I think I know uh, Otto was sort of... Otto involved. Paul. I, I think he, yeah. I, I dropped in earlier. You mentioned him. I, I It's gone out of my yeah. mind now, but it's something about... You know, you're him. asking me about Kevin McDonald now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, Kevin McDonald, um, early on, 10 years ago now, I sent him the... I sent him the article, which is only 1,200 words long. It's very short. Mm -hmm. He and he apparently liked it enough to ask me if he could edit it. Excuse me, edit it, mm -hmm. and he did that. And he seemed set to run it at the Occidental Observer, and then didn't with the for the reason he cited as being if I didn't have the a site set up to take in the registrants, the um, signatories for the um, DNA Nations project, that uh, it, it was premature. I So that's what he said. It's not, it's not, there's not much more than that. I talked to him again recently. He said a little something differently. He said, I talked to him a couple months ago. I said, well, you know, at one time, you seemed like you might do this. What, what do you think now? <clears throat> he said something that I, I'm afraid I'm not much of an organizer. I didn't think that either. I didn't think that's all I said. That's all it was to it. I didn't think that either objection uh, was a good uh, reason to not run it at Occidental Observer. Um, in the first case, um, he could have just said that uh, once you get, you know, we don't have this um, capacity to uh, register your your uh, category just yet of, of uh, half a group, whatever, but we plan to, and you, you might even, in fact, you might help us get that in order. Something like that. He could have said something and run the article anyway. I, I didn't see it as a good reason not to run the article. Um, and I'm not sure really if that was, if that was the reason. I think that behind it, the, the Christians and neo-Nazis uh, didn't want it. Um, I'll have a look at it if you want. I mean, I'm interested in these things, so I'll, I'll definitely read it. Well, it's there. Well, it's there. It's it's there over 
well, in several places. Oh. <clears throat> anyway. Is, is, so, it, is it majority rights? It's a majority rights. It's, it's among the comments of the latest thread that majority rights have reposted it, for example. Anyway, um, uh, I think that the I think that the uh, Christians like Matt Parrott and uh, and others were uh, a part of obstructing it, and that's not good. You know, Matt Parrott's been a pain in my ass, um, and also uh, the neo Nazis don't like me because I go by my my mother's maiden name, Sienkiewicz, which is a Polish name. So they just gonna have, have a knee-jerk reaction against anything that I do, like Carol and Yeager mm-hmm. and others. Mm-hmm. And, they're, and they're, they're, you know, um, always circulating around Kevin McDonald's site, these uh, neo-Nazi types. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he doesn't chase them away thoroughly enough. So that that's pro- I, I suspect that is part of the obstruction as well, and then of course the, the kosher folks don't want us to to organize either. So <clears throat> that's that's another obstruction. Is it a new idea of yours, your latest article, or is it the, the same? I tried to I tried to I tried to run this at the Voice of Reason Network ten years ago in two thousand twelve. And, and I, I haven't really changed the article much since then. There's no need to. It's it's fine. Um, so, what are the usual objections you you get to it? I mean, when people I don't get any good object. I don't get any objections that make any sense. And then there's another objection that I've gotten to it. I was reading this before. Crazy objections from uh, Bowery about how uh, just nutty obje- I, 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 crazy stuff. Um, that I was belaboring before, so I don't want to repeat it. Um, objections. <sighs> Matt Parrott tried to say that it w- wasn't or- organic, um, as or uh, it can't, it just what does strong. that mean when people say that? What, when, what, what? It's not organic. What? It's artificial. It's what? I mean, do you know what that means? Well, I guess that you know it's like some a culture that will arise when people come together in a specific place and express their uh, biology, culture, and religion, or something. Oh, and he, the means, he, can't, he says he can't see it happening naturally. Is is that what it means when some some people complain that it's not organic? Is, is that what they mean? Well, I can read exactly. Sure? I can, I, well, you know the whole. First of all, it's not true because you know, I talk about the DNA Nations project is you know, it's a pretty much a discrete issue, and it's I don't talk about all the things that I talk about in this one article. You know, I'm not going to talk about hermeneutics and uh, you know, biological emergence there as I would in other places, and, and human ecology and, and uh, our bio patterns there. So it's first of all, it's not true, and secondly, uh, but anyway, um, I think that I can find Matt Parrott's the place where he was objecting. He wrote because I had, I said uh, he said I find Bowie's Laboratory of the States idea to be a typical example of unhinged and useless theory with no potential for application. I I find your proposal to be a variation on it, which doesn't address my principal concerns with it. I respect and appreciate the time and work you put into sketching this up. You're evidently bright, knowledgeable, and sincere, but but I depart in my knowledge, excuse me, I depart in my own thinking from this framework at nearly every major consideration. Totally insane. What were his consi- what, what his concerns or considerations he, that you he, that he said you haven't addressed? What what, what were they? He, he said you haven't. Addressed I, I, I can only guess. You know, uh, oh. community building or something. Uh, well, the fact that that his fat bureaucratic ass was not in the charge with his in charge with his Christian religion. Um. 
It doesn't make a lot of sense. He put up this. He he's basically he's an egomaniac and a, and a bureaucrat and a natural mm -hmm. bureaucrat. Um, he, he clashed with um, Jen, didn't he, Matt Parrot? I seem to remember. Um, Jen Shaw. Well, she was many... telling a story about him anyway. I, I don't know if you're aware of that. Not aware of that particular one, but he, but he said um, many controversial things going on about them. He, he was a part of the Charlottesville debacle. Um, he was the one whose best friend at the time, he, he caught fucking his wife and he was standing on a, on a, on a box, on a soapbox recording this. And then when Matt Heimbach came, you know, f you know, realized he was doing it, Matt Heimbach strangled and choked him out and nearly killed him. And when Matt Parrott recovered, he called the, the Southern Poverty Law Center. You don't do these things. <laughs> It's embarrassing. So, it is, so, it, so it, yes. Wow. So, 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 so here's, here's, here's one of the, here's one of the with, comments. With, with, with Parrot's wife. Is that what you're saying? What's that? Who was having sex with whose wife? Is, is Matt, Matt uh, Heimbach was another, was his friend, was another one of these um, Orthodox Christian converts, uh, along with Parrot, who uh, was also kind of a neo Nazi type. He was there at Charlottesville and, uh, um, just another another disaster right winger um, mm -hmm. and um, you know they were trying to assimilate my perspective to some extent of you know the kind of um, taking the, the proletarian or the the kind of left incorporate left concerns into ethno nationalism but they weren't doing it right because they're mm -hmm. inferior intellects Anyway, here's, here, here's what Matt was saying. One of the things that I was saying early on. And even if a, a tsunami of white advocates did topple this regime, what would they do afterwards? Instantiate Alex Linders, I remember him, he's the arch anti-Semite, cowboy libertarianism inside with a, mil with a militant force of ruthless militants standing vigil over the parameters and a constitutional amendment enshrining the right of freedom from association to carry on with the, with business as usual. The Fourth Reich, Confederate States of America 2.0, LDS, that's the um, the, uh, the Mormons. Mm -hmm. Theo, Theodemocracy, don't laugh. It's more likely than others that I've listed to succeed. I'm working on answers to all those questions, which involves reading, pondering, and occasionally throwing in an idea or a proposition out there, here or there, for feedback and perspective. Now, he's not a little arrogant, is he? He's, he's the one who has to do this all by himself. Matt Parrott, fat ass, like 30 year old piece of shit, Christian. What's been really startling to me, more than the entire expe entirely expected resistance to the very taboo I presented, was how many people who were capable of verbalizing the stuff about our impending oblivion and genocide would then blink and do nothing. So he seems to be saying that he wants a, a rule-based system. Is, is that what he, you think he might be saying is lacking in your idea? No, I see that you're trying to correct it to your stuff, but it doesn't matter what he wants because he's just, he want, what, what he wants in essence that departs from me is for himself to be, you know, uh, so important that what I'm doing is is unnecessary. He's got to ponder everything, and this is this is so many years ago, that that communique was from 2012, so 10 years ago. Oh, he's just been he's just been a fat ass obstruction uh, all the while because he was at Voice of Reason. I don't know. You probably don't know Voice of Reason Network, but you would have been you would have been an avid listener back in the day, uh, oh. 2011. It was a reg it was a regnery project. We had there um, not just Matt Parrott. We had uh, Jamie Kelso. We had Tom Sunick. We had um, fr we had um, Paul Fromm. We had oh, I bet him the, the Canadian. Yeah, and we had we, we had um, uh, Keith Preston. Mm -hmm. The anarchist. We had Robert Stark. Mm -hmm. We had we had uh, 
Um, we we had uh, and Carolyn Yeager, the Nazi lady. Oh yeah, you know her. Do, 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 I, I've heard her name, but I've never. Charles Edward Lincoln. Do do you know him? He's he was a, he, he was a frequent guest. Not a frequent. He was a, a common guest at uh, Voice of Reason Network. Um, Did you get on with him? Well, he's a he's a light, affable personality, but he'd be the kind of guy along with. Um, uh, uh, along with Sam Dixon, who's apparently in the way, gotten in the way of the DNA Nations project because of Christianity. They want to make Christianity the ultimate criteria, just like Matt Barrett. Uh, well, that's not going to work, is it? I mean, you know, it is building on sand. I mean, obviously, something happened to Christianity to make everything well said. Not work anymore. It, it's, it, it's really yeah. So, so Charles Lincoln would be. Richard Spencer would be someone frequently coming through the Voice of Reason Network. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of, you know, many people, David Duke, many people that you would know would come through mm -hmm. there. Um, who else? Uh, <coughs> um, yeah, I mean. Did you get on with Joe Davis because he was streaming today or, or yesterday? Um, well, I commented on that. I don't, I don't, I don't get on with him because he is trying. He, he's like, uh, he's too uh, friendly with the kosher folks. Um, he is might he, be getting. But he doesn't like them. He's always blaming them for everything. Well, may, I think that lately he's he's uh, may have been encouraged to start doing that. But to begin with, he was pissing me off because he he was, you know, he's too too much about uh, Paul Gottfried and and uh, his. Um, Jewish professors who he's who are his grad school advisors in philosophy and uh, it just was a lot. Called cats, I remember. Yeah, exactly. You have a good memory, and so there's just reasons that that I'm skeptical of him. I don't trust him, and uh, he was doing the stream. He was doing the stream with Josh Neal, and mm -hmm. which irritated, which just yesterday I think it irritated me yeah, a bit. Yeah. Because um, Josh Neal actually did talk to me, and it was one of <laughs> like I I kind of choked the one time I did the, uh, a stream with Josh Neal the way I did with um, Luke Ford when I talked to him. Not as bad, but my sound was bad, and he didn't. He, he was maybe too timid to tell me about it, mm -hmm. and uh, and and also I didn't. I really should have been better prepared for what I had to say. It was actually. Part of it was an explanation of hermeneutics and a criticism of Josh Neal. And um, uh, I didn't deliver all that well. But anyway, so I, I kind of understand him, but he's telling me that he doesn't want to participate. Uh, or he, it wasn't, he wouldn't um, be interested in talking with me because he doesn't do, quote, casual conversations anymore, which okay. I, I found it offensive because the DNA Nations project is anything but casual. It's... it's uh, should be looked upon as most as most vital to our interests of anything, mm -hmm. and then he goes and I, I've been but I've been critical of Josh because he's a psychologist and this this unit of analysis, the individual is simply not best suited to, uh, to our concerns because we are being attacked as a group. Um, so that's a sociological unit of analysis, the group, um, and you can see that his take on things, I mean, the, you know, American extremists, it's not the most fruitful perspective. And well, but so to make matters worse, not, as, not only is he joining up with these right wingers like, like, uh, like Josh Neal, or excuse me, like, um, like uh, Joel Davis and, uh, and Tyler Hamilton, the Christian guy, mm -hmm. uh, he's joining their blackballing of me. Which, at this point, I almost find I, silly, it, almost comical, and amusing. I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm waiting it out till I, until the day comes when I overcome, where I can, when somebody is reasonable enough to, to start talking and engaging this. But for the time being, there's this right wing blackballing of me, you know, go, moving through mm -hmm. millennial, millennial woes and a series of other people. Um, but and but to make matters worse, Josh Neal in that conversation with Joel Davis is like. He's taking ideas. He took an idea that I was. Um, I might even be talking about it with you, but somebody, uh, with somebody, was saying, um, 
how ridiculous it is that uh, people like Luke Ford and others will criticize people like me and others for being angry and try to say that, oh, we're only angry because we can't get laid. It's not that we're, it's not that we are angry with the way what's happening to society and to our people. This, this is, this is how. Well, I'm, I'm off the keys. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just, just a second. This is how disrespectful that they are of us and our, mm. and our concerns. Mm. That they would say that, that, that all we care about is getting laid, and that's the reason that we're. It's so stupid. Right. And so Josh Neal picked up this very argument and was was uh, saying this, which is really more of the socio uh, uh, sociological kind of argument. Um, uh, you know, philosophical argument. It's not a psychological. It's an argument taking one away from that psychologism that oh, you just want to get laid. To rather, no, I have a I have a serious critique about what's going on with this society. Um, so, like I said, not only does he not talk to me because I'm quote casual, he's he's gonna then he's gonna you know kind of lift an idea of mine. Well, I don't care that much. I mean, I'm on record as having said it, but. Anyway, mm -hmm. these guys are very intelligent. They're all saying really good things. I forget the name of the co his cohort besides Josh Neal. Um, they're all really intelligent, but they're they're mixed up in these right wing ideas and uh, you know, the people who like Hitler and Jesus all too much, and that there becomes you know part of the problem. Um, yeah, well, and this is it? sort of their go on. Well, I suppose that they go back to things that they thought worked, you know, like, you know, when, when you know, the West was great, when they took Christianity seriously, the Crusades, and, you know, I, I guess it's a kind of knee-jerk, you know, you know, going back to your roots when, you know, the, the new thing doesn't work. Well, yeah, well, reactionism is definitely a part of that. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're even trying, you know, even at that, yeah, yeah, definitely. They're okay. trying to, they're trying to, to, uh, Gloam on to my discussion of that and pretend that they're not the, the reactionaries or anything, but whatever. Well, well, I was listening to to Joe Davis talking to, to Josh Neal, and I, I didn't think it, it really went anywhere. I mean, I think you know hmm? Joe is is trying to feel his way, but but he he's not really getting any ideas because he's he's still Catholic, isn't he? That that that's his thing, isn't it? Well, I, I think that you have an accurate sense of it. I, th I thought that it was kind of like a, this kind of is miasma, miasma the word? It's this kind of like granular Bad nothing. <laughs> this granular nothingness going on there. Um, yeah, they really, they, they were, to consider real ideas. They just want. They're to grasping at straws. They're grasping at straws. I mean, you know, well, I mean, that, that I mean, already they, broken. They don't want to. Uh, they don't, want to, they don't want to accept the fact that that uh, you know I've I've radically thought through these matters uh, on the important level, and I've I've got the platform here that um, they're they're trying to they they want to believe that I am somehow unnecessary when in fact I'm well in advance of of where they're at, um, and I don't care. Uh, it it will it will it will. Um, it will show eventually, but yeah, I think that your reading of them is accurate. This, this was like they're kind of like almost confused. Well, I mean, they try. Do. I mean, that, like the, the the last dream Joel had with Richard Spencer, and you know, Richard Spencer just you know doing please, 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 please you know, mainstream media, just let me in. I really, I'm sorry, I did all those bad things, <laughs> and and basically he would say, yeah, I'm a neo neoliberal, I'm a neoconservative, I'm I'm just you know ticking all the boxes, let me in. And, and but, but, you know, Joel Davis, to his credit, is, um, well, well he, well, he ended up talking about US foreign policy and, and the, well, the title of the stream was Western Identity. You, you know the one I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, I, I listened to it, but I don't, I don't, yeah. 
Yeah, but, and, and in the end, they they, could, they 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 spend most of the time talking about uh, U.S. foreign policy, and hardly any time it was like, oh, Vikings, oh, Christianity, oh, I don't know, and and that's it. You know, it was that pathetic. But but you know, obviously that is a problem. Um, and anyway, I I, I had this uh, brainstorm after I listened to. To, to Joe Davis and, and um, Josh, Josh Neal, because it was like, oh, I don't know, don't put me on the spot. I haven't really got anything, you know, but it's nice to talk, you know, when they said what they said at the end. But, but I thought, you know, the, the whole thing about, um, you know, globalism, which is what everybody is objecting to, you know, it's American globalism. And therefore, if you break up the American global empire, you, you will get your, your national identity back. But and, and I thought Joe Jabez, who's Australian, is is not getting it about Western identity because you know Western, you know, it's like it doesn't even make sense to call it West because you know he he's in he's down under in Australasia, so it's not really West, you know, it's not even in the same hemisphere kind of thing as far well, as you, you know well, the come West. On, is know, come on, Claire, you know what he means. I know, I know. He's talking about the civilization that did. The, the civilization that derives from from Greece and the, and the Northern Europeans and, and uh, like that. Yeah, he's talking about a race. Yes, I understand, and I'm saying that. And the, uh, and the civilization that comes from that race. Yes, yes, but 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 actually, if you want to break up the American Empire, you you have to do certain things, and 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 this is all linked to the British monarchy and you know the Queen's you know <laughs> platinum. Um, a jubilee um well this weekend as a matter of fact and uh, and i think you know the the american global empire hasn't really been good for white people all over the world in fact americans themselves don't i agree like it. i so, never like so it. yeah and and the, the, well, well in, ter in terms of in terms of materially some of us uh, benefited to some extent but not you know in, ter in terms of but not uh in terms of our relationships and so on, no. No, because I mean, I hear that Europeans don't even bother speaking their own language properly because they're more interested in learning English, so they can, you know, talk to the boss man, which is Uncle really? Sam. Uh, so, um, so they're losing their identity. So it does affect them, and then they're not really happy because you know a lot of them, you know, have to leave their country in order to get a decent job, and it's usually you know in 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 some well English speaking country, and no. they're, they're not really happy. You know, so, you know, Spanish, Spanish people want to stay in Spain and be with their family and not not be in England. You know, doing whatever they have to do there. So with the miserable so what, weather, you have miserable weather. Yeah. Don't and, and, and people are happier with their family, even though, you know, mm -hmm. their standard of living is not that high. But at least, you know, you know, being with a, a group that you, you're you familiar with it re reinforces your own sense of identity and, and um, you know, stops this alienation and mental illness that happens when you, you're with yeah, a lot of you're, people you're, and, you're, you know, you don't like them. But, you know, you're good you're enough where you're from. You're not being, being judged as a, as a freak or, or you know, a, an interloper as you would be if you go to London or something, right? Yeah, where, where everybody else is freaks anyway. But but what I'm trying to say is is that this you're, is so you were saying that you want you want you, you think that the breakup of the American Empire would be healthy because it would cause the uh, various ethno nations and so on to uh, reemerge and reorganize, right? Yes, and they would assert their own individual national identity, which is not, you know, the British have no culture. They basically have no culture. You know, all, all, all the, you know, high school culture, you know, prom king, prom queen, you know, it, it's just come over here. It's disgusting and Halloween and, you know, all the stuff. They have no culture of their own because the working classes, they really want to be American. They can't make the leap of imagination to be want to be middle class and British. They want to be American, you know. Mm. Or, or, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, I, I had a conversation with this, and, and you know, with, with a. Uh, I'm sure it's not true to the end, but it's probably true of a lot of a lot of America. Yeah, be, because they watch, you know, they they, they watch American uh, uh, TV TV shows, 
and 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 they 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 will you know find themselves having the same aspirations because they think you know the American dream, big car, big house, you know all that sort of thing, and and they want it. And, and but but they're, they're just well using their identity and 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 just being you know pale imitations that that and it will, will go nowhere. And, and this, we'll this was a big problem. Better. This was a big problem in Poland too when it first came. Is that you know I tried to I was trying to warn the people here about uh, bad things coming from America, and they treated me like I was a bad person for for doing this and. You know, a lot of it had to do with the, the movies that some of them were watching and so on, the television shows. Yeah. And they couldn't quite believe what I was, they couldn't believe what I was saying. I think that more of them are going to be aware now that some of them have traveled there and seen for themselves and mm -hmm. gotten other uh, news sources uh, via the internet. But it came too late for me because <laughs> I was, uh, you know, not uh, treated as if I was on their side by saying that uh, America is the problem now that the Soviet Union has fallen. <laughs> they didn't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they they have a pathological hatred of the Russians. It's it's almost you know the not Polish not Russians. not exactly the Russians. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. It's more like it's not a pathological hatred, and, and it's not un, unjustified. This was terrible. Work. It's of the Soviet Union and the, uh, the horrible oppression. And the Soviets, of course, killed more people than uh, in total than the uh, than the Nazis. Even it was, this was terrible communism. I just don't have to address it because nobody is trying to nobody's trying to resurrect Stalin. Whereas a lot of people are trying to redeem Hitler. But well, no, no, but this is un, it's understandable that communism was horrible. Yeah, but, but but what I'm also trying to say is that any old empire will will be well waist deep in blood and gore. I mean, it's just the nature of empire, which is acquired by by war. And well, this this, war. this this is a kind of, you know a just so arguments are are right drastically depart from you like you know you just shrug these things off you know they, these were you know the most horrible uh regimes for for europeans anyway of all time they, stalin and hitler come on yeah of course mao was just as bad but that doesn't yeah. mean, that doesn't well that doesn't mean that that's this is like something to be shrugged off as just the way it is don't worry about it I'm not saying don't worry about it. I think we, you know, we, we, you know, we seem to be um, about to start World War Three. So of course we should worry about it. But I'm saying that these things just happen. You know, the the Crimean War was pretty bad. You know, that there are lots of imperial wars that people are expected to die for. That you know, who, who's uh, what, whose what reasons the... cannot be you know satisfactorily explained to people. You know, if, if you're British, oh, but we can to, 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 to die. Uh, you say well, these the things. Where Hitler just wanted his place in the sun. You just, uh, you know, forget it. You know, that, that's not gonna, that's not gonna wash with oh, me. No. I, I don't let's, let's, come, let's come, let's come, let's come, let's come, let's come, let's come back to something more concrete that you might be able to handle. What, let, uh, how about um, uh, what's happening with with uh, Ukraine now? I've been following it the past few days. Not really. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, taken, I've, taken, I've, taken a, I've taken a step back because I just don't approve of Zelensky fighting, calling for the fighting of Putin in this direct way. I think it's it's uh, absurd, and it's not only going to get a lot of Ukrainians killed and and uh, their infrastructure and housing destroyed, but and and uh, treasures, but also uh, he's you know he's almost trying to get you know the rest of europe involved like you say in in, in world war three it's 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 stupid and I, I don't whether greg johnson or anybody else thinks that uh he's representing ethno-national interests uh i'm sorry it's this is this is um totally wrong he should not. He should not be supplied and uh, and encouraged to. to oh, I'm fight. glad. You, I'm, glad, I'm glad we agreed on that because you know he he's a you know NATO's cat's paw. 
right? He, he, you know, he's just sort of, you know, made to sacrifice you know, Ukrainian blood to, you know, just to provoke Russia and to bleed Russia dry. Yeah, to try anyway. He's not going to, um, and uh, and maybe worse. I mean, think about how he's calling for for a, a no for NATO to enforce a no fly zone. That's like saying like join World War Three. Mm. It's, it's it's absurd. I mean, yeah, and you know, not just NATO's cat's paw, also the uh, the neocons and uh, Operation Clean Break and all this. It just you know, I I maintain that a true Ukrainian ethno nationalist would not be so hazardous hazardous with Ukrainian blood and and with not with the blood of Russians women. either. They've lost huh? their women. The Ukrainian the Ukrainian men have lost their women. The the women have fled. I mean, they'd be utterly demoralized. It's like, you know, usually the men, you know, hang around to defend their women. And they can't leave. The, the, Zelensky has made is uh, prohibited by law. Pro prohibited them by law from leaving Ukraine. They have to fight. That's the Yeah, but 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 they. Well, I, I'm saying it's demoral. I imagine it would be demoralizing. Yeah, I would imagine it would be. If you, you know, you're, you're, you're supposed to be defending your women, your property, and your women are gone. So it's like, well, you know, who cares? You know? And they'll probably never come back, you know, within their lifetimes, you know? <laughs> they'll go to, they'll go to uh, London and do whatever they do there. Yeah, 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 and and they're not going to come back, or they'll come back changed, or or whatever. So yeah, drug um, addicts, <laughs> sluts, whatever. Sluts, um, slut, drug addicts. I, I, I'm afraid. You, I, I think you know probably the the morals of Polish women who come to London, you know, to the UK. You know, I'm not sure. Well, of course, happened to them. And um, yeah, yes, it's well, that, that, that's that's the, that's the, that's the, you know part of the disconcerting thing as you come here you know and they're good as long as they're they're here and uh but you know we you know when you i i know that if they were in america or other places that they're still just women and susceptible to the the pause as much as any other women so it's, mm -hmm. they're well, no better it, it, they just you know, well the ones that stay here are a bit better because the reason why they stay here is because they they uh you know they like the polish men and and uh, they, they like being here so there is I'm, i i shouldn't criticize them too much um because you're foreigner <laughs> not not living in your own country i know I, you know I, I suppose in a way it, it's sort of useful because you know people will, will not be so you know inclined to uh, propose a pogrom because you know I think everybody kind of knows they're not really where they're supposed to be because you know for, for all kinds of reasons they're in somebody else's country and and sometimes they've already settled down and married and have you know half you know mixed race um, children or something but but what, what I what the idea I wanted to run run by you is is this in order to break up the American Empire. You, you actually have to undermine the British monarchy because technically, really? it, technically, uh, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the what what used to be called the British Dominions, which is now mm -hmm. you know called uh, you know, but but re, you know they, they kind of pretend that that you know they're all different countries with with you know their their, their different uh, policies. Right. But actually, they, they have the same law as the UK. They they, they have the same queen. They, they still have these sort of colonial uh, I'm, I'm positions. Iron was yeah. talking about this. He was saying that that uh, uh, at certain times that it's voted on and they can they can uh, uh, change this, like in Australia and Canada. Um, I think. It, when the, there's referendums, and particularly if the queen dies, um, but um, last time that it did come up, they could have they could have uh, gone their own way as Australians, but they didn't. Yes, yeah, so under, um, under Bob Hawke. Uh, so who who mentioned this? You, you said something. Was I, Iron about. Duke, ninety nine Iron Duke. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Um, yes, because you know technically, 
um, the, the, the governor general, and it's still opposed it, you know, they haven't abolished it or anything. And um, there is this post and he, he can he can dismiss the prime minister if he wants to. Well, I, that yeah, is a okay, okay, but um, is that going to, it might help. I don't see how that helps in the American empire. Well, that's if, the British if, you, if you accept, if you accept, or the legacy of it. If you, if you accept that the British just do whatever the Americans tell them to, which they do, really, I mean, there have been all kinds of jokes about, you know, Britain being a UK, US missile base, you know, the yeah. British being part of the poodles of America, and, and you yeah. know, and, 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 and a lot of them actually believe, oh, we have this special relationship until, you know, you, you saw um, Obama going, to, you know, to European country by European country in saying the same thing like you're special to us or Sweden <laughs> you're special to us Finland you're special to us you know or, and it, it, it was it then and then you realize that of course the British are well they just happen to speak English and, you know, um, and, and Americans love the British royal family but you know that, that that's it but okay so, so basically if you accept the premise that that technically I mean they, they've disguised it of course you know um, that that technically Canada, Australia, and, and, and New Zealand belong to Britain because the, 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 the position of the Governor General remains and, and they still have the right to dismiss the Prime Minister and the Governor General takes orders mm -hmm. from Her Majesty. So that 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 is basically the situation. I mean, we can you know argue about you know whether it actually happens, but but there, there, there was a situation. Um, a time in 1976 when Gough Whitlam was dismissed by the Governor General because he, he he was sort of objecting to the CIA having a listening post in, in somewhere in Australia. But that's not the way it is anymore, is it? The, the, the I, I Queen is just, is the, a, just a figurehead. I mean, she could technically dismiss she people, but she's not. Well, uh, well, she's lost so long, I think, because you know she's not a terribly educated woman. She never went, you know, she never went to school. They're not even she English; they're German, aren't they? The royal family. You know, but you know, you know well, we don't know how much she really understands about you know geopolitics and stuff. It probably she's just you know told to sign a, a bunch of papers, and she does well, without question. And, 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 and they, they take happy. they take in so much money, don't they? The, the royal family, you know. I don't. I'm I'm among those who, uh, you know, I love British. I, I you say they don't have a culture. I, I do like British. I think do think they do have a culture, and, beautiful, and their language is beautiful, and so on. But uh, the royal family, I, I personally, I I, I think that. Uh, They'd be better off without it at this point, but for for what the Queen says and, and her, yeah. I, mean, I don't think. Well, I mean, I think you know, it depends on what, you know the the culture of which class and which region. I mean, I, I obviously I don't know all the cultures of, of England, but I'm talking you know mainly of the you know working classes, yeah, you're talking, the urban you're, working classes who in, in well, London and so on. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, uh, it would be sort of football clubs, and it's, know, yeah, that it's, would it's, be a noticeable it's culture. Um, anyway, which is not very edifying, really. Yeah, but Maybe you know, I, 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 I would not, I uh, would not uh, mind seeing the monarchy undone. Uh, you see, the, the, this, that that was really what I, I was saying because because it is through the British monarchy that America has control over, you know, what what Australia, Canada, and New Zealand do. do. I mean, yeah. they have they, they have no independent foreign policy, and and the thing that these white mm. people living in these countries do not know is it or, or do not seem to have realised is that other you know other non-white parts of the British Empire already declared independence a long time ago, you know, about oh. fifty years ago, and and these people in these white countries, people like Joel Davis, it's like well. I don't think you know. You, you actually need to to declare yourself to be independent from Britain before you you actually come into your own. Otherwise, you you know you you, you have this sort of mishmash identity. That, that that makes sense. But I, what doesn't oh, make sense is how is how that would um, reflexively affect uh, America quite so. Well, well, because America won't be able to say you know look. 
um, I want this and I want that. Because, oh, okay. You know, oh, it would take, oh, their means of, it would take you the means of international control away. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, true. I mean, because yeah, in yeah. these countries, Canada, I mean, basically, looted. Canada and, and Australia are important in that respect. Yeah, definitely. And 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 and, and, and looted for, for the natural resources, and also harvested mm -hmm. for for the men for for the neocon wars. I'm surprised at how many you know Canadians and Australians actually you know were recruited to you know to fight these neocon wars. Yeah, you know, lots, lots of Australians. Well, the Australians, of course, famously, famously complained about Churchill and and uh, Gallipoli, and mm. and then you got you got all this these uh, this CIA stuff going on with uh, mm. you know given offering the the, uh, the heads of state and and all these these uh, third world places of, of you know what's the, what is it gold or gold or lead you know. You're, and you know, t take our uh, our take our loans and put yourself into insurmountable debt to us, mm -hmm. so that we can take over your country, mm -hmm. or or we'll kill you. And this, mm -hmm. which is which, which the CIA has done. Mm. I mean, th that 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 Swedish um, prime minister who was um, assassinated, Olaf Palme, him. I mean, he 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 didn't want to go on, go along with the you know uh, neocon agenda, and then he was suddenly assassinated. Really? When when did that happen? Um, in the nineteen eighties, I think. I, I'm not sure now. Let, let me look it up. But but it, it it was very suspicious. I mean, you know, the person was never the assassin, the assassin was never properly you know discovered, or or somebody had to take took the rap. You know, it, it does. In Israel, the Rabbi Kahane, who said, "Well, you know, let let Israel become a Jew, you know, an ethno state," and and he, and he said, uh, and, "And and we won't need American help." And then suddenly he was, <laughs> you know, assassinated. So I so remember he him. Said, he, he he was really a, a racist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he said, "Yeah, we're going to kick out the Arabs and you know all that," um, but but. Yeah, so so really, you know, uh, I, I keep explaining to people like you know, Israel is 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 just an American protectorate. It was in 1986. He died in 1986. You're talking about Meyer Kahane now. Uh, Olaf Palme. Oh, oh, Olaf Palme. Yes. He I don't know whether the, I don't know whether to trust you about this. It might be just a crazy conspiracy theory. Well. Uh, it, I mean, if you look at what he actually said, um, you, you would know that he, he didn't agree. He didn't agree with uh, U.S. foreign policy. And um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, you know. I never, I, you know, because I'm, I'm used to hearing about these, or I was, I've gotten used to hearing about uh, Latin American and Southeast Asian countries uh, being given given this offer they can't refuse, but not Sweden. I didn't know they were, it would apply this in Europe, so maybe well, it's a I, different. I, but while you're talking about neocons, you're not talking about the, the CIA operations. Well, I guess the, the CIA operates neocon policy. Um, um, you know, the, 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 the death of, of um, what's his name, Haider, the, the Austrian. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that. that's pretty suspicious, isn't it? It is. It is suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we can't really discount that these things don't go on. I mean, what was the point of having a secret police and, you know, what, you know, the James Bond? I don't, I don't say that, I don't say that it can't happen. I'm more, less skeptical of this kind of conspiracy theory than I used to, to be. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just don't know. I can't really comment on it. I'd have to, I'd have yeah. to look at that one. Yeah, per, I mean, he was pretty anti. Per, per might know something. Per would probably know something about it. Per Norden is going to be mm -hmm. uh, joining me sometime soon. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not next week, but maybe sometime during the week. He's from Sweden, so he should know. And also, uh, Snorkel Blog, as you, who you, of course, you know, is going to be. Uh, I think that he should be coming back sometime soon. Okay, and he's, okay. his, his being from Sweden, he should he should know about uh, this case as well. Mm -hmm. did, did did you have a look at the arrangement of the Finnish cabinet? It, it, isn't it confusing? But they, they seem to have. No, of course not. But I, 
I do. I do think that the, their prime minister is hot. She, she's a pretty lady. Yeah, but that's, you know, to, 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 that's, that's all. That's all that I notice. I don't know. Okay. Don't know. Okay. But but you know, it just means she that, is hot. You know, I'll bet you like her yourself, don't you? But what I'm trying to say is that. It, it, when you have an attractive female prime minister, you, 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 you alarm bells should be ringing and saying, well, why is she being put there, you know, to distract the men? And, and I remember when during the EU referendum and Nigel Farage was sort of being interviewed about, you know, his uh, Brexit and everything. And the more desperate and angrier they got at him, the, 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 you know, the, the, the more attractive and blonde the, the you know, <laughs> they, they got out to see, you know, to sort of say, look at this pretty, wonderful, you know, clever, intelligent, you know, anti-Brexiteer. We, we, we lost our chance of, we lost our chance of John John Kennedy. He was so, uh, good. He was so damn good looking. He should have been president. <laughs> No, I think politics should be just the, uh, the game for ugly. But no, there was, there, was, there was one other. There was one other. Um, there's one other um, head of state that's quite beautiful. Not just the, the Finnish one. Is it from Estonia? Might be the Estonian. I'm not sure. I know that there's another. I don't think that the one I from. I think the plants, you know, I, you know, because I, I, Diane Duke is always saying that she's horse faced, but I actually think that the lady from uh, New Zealand. You're just horny for anyone. You kill your. No, no, no. For, for the one from um, New Zealand, she's pretty good looking too. You like her? She's a single. She's an unmarried mother. This is so terrible. But is she really? Yeah, oh, she's, she's not a, married. She's a slut. A yeah, slut. she's a, well, 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 and Boris, you know, and uh, he's also. I, I mean, he, they, they shouldn't. Okay, they would be treated as sex offenders and would never be allowed to darken the street of it. I think you, you, you want to uh, cane her. Right. No, no, no. I, you, I want to be the, you want to be the administrator of the punishment. No, no, I, I, I just have no, no, no. <laughs> I'd, I'd be occupied until I don't know for several lifetimes. I think if, if I had to, you know, beating the slots the job. <laughs> there's, there's enough of them. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I'd have to. Invent now, who, well, anyway, yeah. so there's, anyway, there's there is there is another very um, pretty lady head of state in Europe, and I forget which state at the moment. It's not just it's not just. I was surprised. It's not just the Finnish lady. Yeah, I mean Macron was supposed to attract you know the the you know the um, eighteen to twenty five year old female graduates who voted. Well, it could be. I don't. I, I don't I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gay, so I don't know. Maybe, I guess. But okay, I know, I know that the men who, who who just can't even bring themselves to acknowledge that you know some other man might be considered attractive by women. No, yeah, I can. I can. I can say, well, he's a handsome guy. My my father was he was the ultimate macho man. He, he, even he could say, oh, not a bad looking guy. Yeah, you, can, you, can, <laughs> you can you can do that. It's 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 possible to be. A man, and to acknowledge that another guy is is, is handsome. But, oh, uh, I, I thought they had to say, "Well, well really, I, I haven't noticed. I, I, I would know." <laughs> <laughs> I just said, John, John, John Kennedy. He was so damn good looking. He should have been president. But he was. I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But but yes, this is what I'm saying. That, that Jackie that, Kennedy too was good looking. Well, did you see? You did, you, that, did, you see mean, the, did you see the pictures of her nude? I, she was really nice. She was almost flat chested. She was sexy. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I, there, I, there I, were I paparazzi just pictures, pictures of her nude sunbathing on uh, Greek island. Oh, oh. Well, I mean, I mean, she 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 was a very good looking woman anyway. So yeah. I suppose she. she Look even more good looking without her clothes. Yeah, yeah. Top. She, mm. she was definitely. Mm. But but this is what I'm saying. You know that 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 white identity is is fluid and it will always be fluid. People just have to do the right thing and then they'll have the right identity that that, that, that an identity that they like. And and I think well, fluidity is not a, it's not a problem, but it but it has it has to have uh, parameters to. Uh, structure it 
and, well, to, well, yeah, and, you, and to provide for accountability. Well, well yes, um, but this is a problem of democracy that people don't get. That, you know, this is, okay, a song by Gilbert and Sullivan, who were Victorians, were basically talking were about this. Gay, no, they weren't gay, but you, you know, if you like opera or light opera, yeah, that's kind you know, of gay to like opera. Well, I like that's opera. Right. You can call me gay. I don't mind. I don't my mother, used, my mother used to play me Gilbert and Sullivan uh, albums as a kid. I, I, I liked them. I enjoyed. Them. Yes, on. yes, I, I enjoyed them, and 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 it was. Um, well, Sullivan wrote the music, but Gilbert wrote the words, and he he was always talking about politics. He was, you know, all, all this, you know, to, to everyone's a little liberal and a little conservative, and 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 they, you know, that he was basically talking about Tweedledum and Tweedledee policies, and and that that you know the the MPs would go and vote according to what their leaders told them with that thing, you know, because they take their brains out before they vote, you know, it it's got this goes back a very long time. And if you read any of the lyrics of, of any um, Gilbert and Sullivan um, opera, um, you, you will you will there, there, there is social and political satire. So um, that one is, is Iolanthe and, and and basically saying that this, the system was was already shot, you know, way back then when 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 Britain was supposed to be at the zenith of a power, but but you know Sullivan was saying that they're stupid. They, they, they just work vote for silly things. And um, so it does go back a long time. And, and you know, we, I, and, and we've only just begun to notice, I think. And um, the, the, the other opera that I, I think it was called The Gondoliers, and it was saying that, you know, um, if everyone is someone, then nobody is anyone at all. And, mm. and obviously they were talking about egalitarianism. And, um, and, and this means that if, no. um, in, in an egalitarian society, you don't really know who's in charge. And, and, and that's why you get no accountability, and that's why everybody's going crazy. But, but if, if you yeah, want to know, probably I, I, think I, I think that's uh, fair enough to say. That, mm. Or at least that, that, that's, that's what presents anyway. Oh, well. Yeah, well. yeah, because even now. That, that's the way they want it to look. They, we have a democracy, so, you know, it's. Yeah. No, nobody's really responsible. It's just dispersed through, you know, the, the universe. Yeah, because the the, uh, the buck is being passed, and and oh, yeah, yeah. you may remember Truman saying the buck stops here and at the Oval Office. Well, it didn't. The velocity of the circulation of the buck actually increased, and now we don't know who who has it. You know, and by the time you find out who, who has it, it, it will be passed on to somebody else already. And and, and this was what Hitler was talking about. Well, you heard, you heard uh, and you heard an academic agent talking about uh, the managerial elite and, and your horrible remiss and not understanding uh, the, the Burnham writings on the, the, the Machiavellians and, and this sort of thing. <clears throat> He's talking about how that's all come about, that these uh, owners have given away to these uh, technocratic specialists who, who become the, the managerial elite. This is all the the, um, the fashion of the, the uh, Joel Davises of the world, the people who don't want to acknowledge that, uh, you know, the prime role of your kosher friends, your friends, the ones who... Or more than anybody else, set the agendas. I don't think they take do. the initiatives. Set the agendas. Take the initiatives and and grease the palms. No, because Your it's friend. a stupid system anyway. It's a stupid Your system. It's it's sort friend. of it's a stupid system. You were agreeing with me before we got onto the subject of Jews that that there is no accountability, and the actual operation of democracy means that all these different parties can vote, can, uh, competing for votes will be scrabbling around to to get the you know the the biggest vote. Well, I've explained I've explained this perversion of democracy to you, Claire. Uh, 
this has been, you know, uh, John Dewey, the pragmatist, um, had the perhaps noble intention of uh, spreading democracy, uh, promoting democracy as the means, uh, as the necessary means to um, um, to bring uh, to create more participant more participation from the citizenship and uh, with you know he's kind of like promoting the idea of what I when I talk about correctivity that the people will uh, by means of this their democratic input correct things now of course the the pragmatists and, and John Dewey in particular were uh, taking practical the, the practical force of this too far and and putting too much faith in the extension of the uh, of the franchise as something that would correct problems you're so you're seeing uh, you're correct in seeing this as problematic now it's been uh, exaggerated and, and it's been uh, by those who uh, extend vo voting rights, including not only to uh, um, incompetent uh, minorities and and uh, and um, just anybody within the nation, but they're also, as you know, trying to extend uh, <laughs> voting to even illegal aliens uh, because they're going to vote Democrat and so on. Um, but when you hear Schoemer and Timothy Snyder and uh, um, Joel Kotkin talking about their their latching on to this uh, exaggeration, uh, exaggerated extension of the franchise and the ruining of any uh, meaningful social accountability that you are. I think correctly calling attention to, but it does, there is a, uh, <clears throat> there's a kosher hand in this too, um, that's causing, that's creating this distortion. Um, part of it, of course, as you know, would be the, the, the paranoia of, um, uh, you know, and the, and the wish to uh, diminish um, white power, so to speak. And uh, so, but it is, you know, that's this is where um, this diffusion of uh, responsibility and, and social accountability. Uh, I, I think one of the, the key mechanisms is this uh, popular and very good sounding promotion of <clears throat> the extension of the the uh, democratic franchise. I had mentioned in the re previous show how it should be <clears throat> limited. And I, I don't think that you would disagree. Uh, you know, there should be a certain age you would have to come, maybe nobody under 30, mm -hmm. nobody can't pass certain tests and, and uh, their uh, knowledge of civics and other and other things in, in philosophy and, and uh, history. A lot um, of people only. Maybe that, and, and also um, there should just be and there should be an upper rank where perhaps where people's votes count more but then again but then you know when you get into the, some things just not up for vote the borders and the boundaries of the nation more or less not that's not up for vote period yeah. and, and also then you have to look at the whole quantitative mechanism clunky cl quantitative mechanism of voting altogether that's ridiculous you know you have you know, if you put one, it's like putting one foot in a bucket of ice water and one foot in a bucket of boiling water and saying, on balance, I'm, I'm comfortable. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, it's it's a quantitative thing. And then the, the winner uh, take all, right? As opposed to taking the issue and presenting them for discussion among uh, people who are, uh, who merit, uh, the rank to do to discuss important matters and shaping and crafting the particular matter under discussion rather than you know voting on it and and coming up with whatever uh result 
That's a very clunky mechanism. Mm -hmm. It's quantity as opposed to qualitative shaping and crafting of the idea. Yeah, so, so inequality should always trump numbers. And and people, but you know, but, but if you operate under a democracy, you, you you have to go by the numbers because that's the whole point of democracy anyway. So well, the, well, the, 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 the thing is, is, is the, here, here's here's the problem with what's going on now. Is all these anti-democratic people? There is there is you know validity and why I go with the idea of correctivity to the the pragmatist's notion of uh, <clears throat> different inputs providing correction to uh, the fallible discursive structures put forth by by others shaping and crafting them um, and that that's and it is kind of kind of a democratic thing you know where where people from different positions can correct the system to prevent it from going into runaway and create homeostasis. That is to say, uh, a self-corrective system. That's what homeostasis is. Um, so that we, as European peoples, can maintain ourselves against this uh, onslaught uh, by your friends, for, for one example. We need a one-party state. I, I, you know, I've been saying that for years. I don't know if you agree. I don't even know if you agree with that. Do you agree with that? Maybe. I don't. You know, I, we, 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 one thing we need is that um, the idea that our that our borders and the, the borders and boundaries of our people are, are not up for vote. We need unionization of our people. Um, one-party state. Maybe I don't. You could be right about that. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't see. I don't see why there should. You know, there should be um, different parties. I mean, I get you would be. I think that you're right about that because that would be kind of like a, a voting thing too, where it, a quantitative thing, not really. You know, losing sight of the fact that uh, there are issues that need to be discussed and and. Um, Elaborated and, and sorted out, not not uh, you know, <laughs> um, whatever. I don't. Um, yeah, I mean, not, it, it, not, it's, not yeah, because it, it it is sort of what's the word combative unnecessarily. It should be more well collegiate. As, as well, what, what is it? It would be like um, digital and. Um, uh, uh, What's what's the word these, these guys use? Uh, digital voting? No, not 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 digital voting, but um, no, I'm I'm trying to. Um, oh, there's a word I'm looking for. It just escapes me at the moment. Oh, it has to do well, with bi you, you, uh, you know binary. Maybe would be. Uh, oh right, so it's, so you know black and white, it, up and down. Yeah, it's 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 not. Uh, Manichaean? No, 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 not binary. Manichaean. Okay, but I think you, yeah. Okay. Uh, I hate when people. I hate when people use the the Manichaean word almost in the the conventional co correct way because it distracts from the way that that I use it um, mm -hmm. by means of um, Maxwell, Quirk Maxwell, and his demons. Do, do you remember reading George Washington's farewell speech? Have I asked you this question before? Um, yeah. I, I, not, not only that, I, um, me and my brother actually restored Franz's tavern or the, the, uh, the brick one. On the outside where he gave that farewell speech. Wow. And, and where your Puerto Rican friends set a bomb off, uh, these Puerto Rican separatists, and uh, blew off some guy's head at one time. Yeah, but he gave his that farewell speech. Where, 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 where was that? It's at the extreme near the extreme southern tip of Manhattan, Francis okay. Tower. Right. It's it's just south of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, he said no, avoid foreign entanglements, basically. Yeah. He was but, right. I, I mean, I, I was 
knocked out when I read that or, or heard it read. It was too. You, gave, you were off in the date by a hundred years, but besides that, yeah. It was from 17, the late 1700s, not the late 1800s. No, no I, I meant when I first was aware of that speech was in 2021. When it was no, but you, you said you, you, you sent me an email saying the speech was given in the late 1800s. It's given in the late 1700s. Um, I think it was published or, or, or kind of, it, 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 it was something I got from Wikipedia. And I think it, it was, okay, I think the tradition began then of reading it on his birthday. Oh, no, nice, nice try. Nice, but, but, nice try. It doesn't no, it doesn't matter. I know, we know what you meant. I'm just yeah. teasing you a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good speech, definitely. It, yes, and I, I don't think people are aware of how good good a speech. I mean, yeah, I've I've tried. No, I, no. I, the, here, I, I have to say that um, it's that speech is is um, not infrequently invoked by conservatives who are arguing against. Um, foreign ventures and wars it just doesn't mm. it doesn't work <laughs> you know the neocons are gone and done it anyway yes, you, know, but, you, but, you but, can but, say but, well george washington said this and it's like you know you just never mind but he did say washington did, well, he did say, say that, that we he must say, with caution and, we must and, with eisenhower, caution. and eisenhower said you know watch out for the military industrial complex it does it, it yeah, doesn't yeah. Matter. Yeah. None of it matters. None of it matters. Because people don't take it seriously. They, 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 it's not people. I guess it's it's that the congressmen are all bought off by your friends and they do what they want to yeah, do. Because you have this crazy your system friends of, of having... Have, you, you, who you, you try to you, let, let you, off the hook for everything. No, no, no. no I'm just how saying... Much, how much, it's, it's not you know, even the you, Jews. You, it's you're, this is going to be... None required. Oh, it is, of course. And you... And you, you, this is going to be an unrequited love. You're not going to get in the Union Square. Well, yeah, I'm maybe. saying it's corporate America that that benefits from your year-long election campaigns when the political parties go cap in hands to cap in hand to their corporate donors. So when you win, there's there's, there's going to be payback time. You know, remember all the money we donated so you could win the presidential election. Well, we'd like you to do this and that and the other thing for us well you know that's how you know, it happens there's, 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 a, there's a back and forth there's a, a revolving door between the corporations and and the politicians yes Where, and, like and, Dick and, and under the hindu caste system at least they have the idea that the priesthood is on top you know uh, that but but what we have now is that the fourth estate is the first estate, and they have no rules. They follow no rules because they're not even a religion, right? They they just have to the, the neocons are pretty much famous for that. It's like anarchy. I, so the only the only relative order would be um, Israeli interests. But other than that, it just uh, seems like chaos is almost part of their at the heart of their theory. Hmm. But but I think you know that is a problem. You, you, Americans are just they don't take any a, anything that Washington said seriously. They, they 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 read the words, but they don't understand the meaning of it, and they do the well. How, well, how can they? They do what they they they, yeah, they want to do you, anyway. Because you won't say. Don't, the don't blame it on the people. Don't blame it like Luke Ford. Oh, it's all your fault fault that you don't like America. It's a, you know these people have power and they're doing their, and they're doing their thing. What I'm saying is is that the people who complain about this and that, they, they won't say the thing that they need to say, which is that, you know, you want a one-party state, just like China. You won't say it, though, because it, 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 they sound kind of... Well, know, it's like... like emotional say, saying that is like saying... Um, you want to do away with the Republican and, and Democratic parties. You can't. Well... Why not? It, it, why it's not? Like, it's, it's not it's impossible. Like, what do you? Why not? Because because you can't. Because they won't let you. Well, uh, you could uh, still propose it. 
<laughs> he can People still propose propose these things all the time. It's, I, it's, I don't know who, who has. has. Who has? It's, it's, it's not going to change until somehow um, it begins to be uh, successful balkanization or or whatever some kind of balkanization in the the American. Uh, Project from it'll be, it'll, it'll from be chaotic and violent because we know what happened during partition in India and it wasn't a pretty sight. So I'm not sure. It's I'm not, I'm not going to happen for you. I, I think you, you ought to think again. I mean, I don't, who's going to decide who's next? Who goes? Well, who, who, well, who's going to be? Um, who's going to be fighting with what violence? I don't know. Well, maybe I suppose I, I think it, it's going to be a bit hard to organize. So you might as well just sort of sort out your law and order problem, which is going to be easier than decide who gets to stay and who gets well, to well, go. You, get, you know, just like you can try to say that there should be a one party rule, but it's just not. Go I mean, if, for who? I say all sorts of things that, that aren't happening yet, but I'm saying they it's should like, happen to solve your problem. But you're saying I'm not going that's to. Not this, that's, that's, well, that's, that's not this. That's not. That's not. That's you know the the organization of American politics is not that's that's not uh, that doesn't correspond with the organization of European American peoples anyway. So whether it becomes a one party rule is not really uh, relevant yet, and. Um, we have to organize as people first, and that, or, that organization is disrupted by the first of all by the key move of forcing our people to identify as right wing, dissident right, neither left nor right, like that. So well, all the, we, all the organization it corresponds. I, with I have been proposing. No, I don't. Your, your your proposals are not particularly welcome here, Claire. But, well, you know, it would make sense. My proposal. Well, you know, what? You, what is, you okay. just don't want to even talk about. What, you know, what? What is your? What? Is, what's the? You said a one-party state. Okay. Well, yeah. so what? What? But I mean, yeah. Well, that, that's that's fine. But, okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad we agree that 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 you know that that would solve a lot of problems. It would be you know begin to solve the problems, and it is also uh, in you, harmony you know, with what George Washington said. It's not something of my little idea. It, but... You could be right about that. Well, no, George George Washington was offered to be the king of America, and he declined that. Well, yes, because of the whole idea that he didn't want. It, it's all part and parcel of not having an established. No, he religion. wasn't saying that there should be a one-party rule. Well, he did say it in his speech. Or you say he didn't really mean it, or, or maybe he, said, he said there should be a one-party rule. Yeah, you said it. Please read it. Oh, so maybe we can talk about it next time, huh? That would be great, wouldn't it? Be nice. Oh, you can pull, pull it up now. It's not that long, right? It's quite a long speech. Well, just, just do, a, do, a word, do a word search and, and find the part we talked about one party rule because I, I, I didn't know. Okay. That. All right. His, thanks, his Thanksgiving speech was good too. Oh, I haven't read that one. Be beautiful speech. Okay. But it's, but it's uh, disappointing in that it's Christian. But besides that, that's a short one. There's time to read that one. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. Oh, if I have ages to start itself up again for some reason. George Washington. I'll look up the Thanksgiving speech. You look up what he says. Seventeen eighty nine. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see. You're going to read it? Do you want to read it? It's quite, it's quite short, so I can read it. Hmm. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor, and whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee, committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity to peaceably establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of the United States to the service of that great and glorious being who is the benefact, the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. That we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for this kind care and protection of the people of this count of this country previous to their becoming a nation for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interposition of his providence which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war to the great degree of tranquility union and plenty which we have since enjoyed for the for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government and happiness and particularly the national one now the national now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty we are blessed and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge and in general for all the great and various which he hath been pleased to confer upon us just one more paragraph and also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great lord and ruler of nations beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions to enable us all whether in public or private situations to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually government a blessing to all of the people by constantly being a government of wise just and discreetly and aid to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations especially such as have shown a kindness unto us good government peace and concord to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue and the entreat the increase of the word of science among them and us and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as alone known to be best given under my hand and the city of new york this third day of year of our Lord, 1789, George Washington. Hmm. Hmm. That was kind of nice. Yes, yes. Hmm. Well, they it's good to a godly person like yourself. Hmm. Well, so you're an atheist. I'm, I'm agnostic, really. I, I have to consider both positions. Now, what I have is, is a two short paragraphs. So you, you wrote, okay. So um, this is about having no this is the, this, this is farewell address given from Francis Tavern in New York. What year? 1790. Oh well what was it? It should be there. 
Um, I, I, I I'll, I'll look at it. You go ahead and read what you have to read. Okay, so, so he begins. The alternate domination of one faction over another, sharpened by the spirit of revenge, natural to party dissension, which in different ages and countries has perpetrated the most horrid enormities, is itself a frightful despotism. But this leads at length to a more formal and permanent despotism. The disorders and miseries which result gradually incline the minds of men to seek security and repose in the absolute power of an individual, and sooner or later the chief of some prevailing faction, more able or more fortunate than, than his competitors, turns this disposition to the purposes of his own elevation on the ruins of public liberty. However political parties may now and then answer for popular ends, they are likely in the course of time and things to become potent engines by which cunning, ambitious and unprincipled men will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government, destroying afterwards the very engines which have lifted them to unjust dominion. I, I posted the link to for the whole article if you want to read it. Where does it, where does it say? Where did you say about one party government? Well, well, what well, this was. So, so the, he was saying that. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll read the beginning. The, the article is, is in the vast and story sto uh, and story history of this country. There's, there's only ever been one president who did not represent a political party, George Washington. Every man, every man since who has occupied that prestigious position has been elected to represent not only the people but the platform and policies of the political party. When President George Washington left public office, he cautioned the nation to divide themselves into political parties. There's a, there's a verse in the Quran saying that too. In his farewell, where, where, where does it say that in his, in his words, though? I could, I'm, I'm sure it is, but I just want to hear the part where he says that. Um, he doesn't quote the Quran, but. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I want to hear the part where he says it, not more. Okay, I'm, I'm about to read it. In his farewell address, as he stated that the spirit of the party, quote, serves always to distract the public souls and enfeeble the public administration. It agitates the community kindles the animosity of one part against another, ferments occasional riot and insurrection. Unquote. Was he able to see into the loved nation would face in the years to come? Perhaps not, but he certainly saw with clarity the dangers of partnership in this American experiment. In his administration. Oh, yeah, you're, you're right. I, I can see the wisdom in that. And also, I mean, it goes, that goes to um, uh, somebody made a, a brilliant argument. Oh, years back at Majority Rights about um, a similar thing happening with these, this idea of dueling um, 
lawyers over over court cases and how uh, <laughs> you know how you know really how uh, this was not necessarily the means to um, come to a, a just conclusion uh, to adjudicate the thing to a fair ending. Um, you know, two two positions battling it out in rhetoric, just trying to win. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I I can't articulate it right now as as uh, as well as that guy did. But yeah, it was a perfect critique of, of this. As it was a, apparently a lawyer who understood that this was not necessarily the the, the best way to. Arrive at justice, and, and that that would a similar argument would apply to uh, the party system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you know, the, the one party state is but, not but, some but, kind but, of but Nazi idea, right? But, you know, but, it, it but, but George Washington. What? Well, what have for year until the Trump election, right? thing that was that was good about white nationalism that they understood well going back to the days of Wallace I don't know if you know him but he would say that there's not a dime's worth of difference between the Republicans and the Democrats in regard to white interests anyway now George Wallace was the Alabama governor who stood in the uh, at the school doorway that uh, Nicholas Katzenbach tried to intervene with in order to to uh, uh, assert school integration at you know at the behest of uh, uh, Eisenhower and and um, and Kennedy and so on, um, but uh, they dog. It was always understood that probably well, these are the corporatists who will dog whistle to the white population, but not really give them anything. Uh, While well, the Democrats are obviously, you know, uh, will <laughs> give everything, give everything to the uh, the minorities. And while they used to, you know, Republicans used to be the Democrats used to be the party of uh, the Southerners and, and the the working class. They more and more became uh, a party in advocacy of of uh, Blacks and other other non-whites or anti-whites. Uh, so that's why, reluctantly, perhaps whites have gravitated towards the Republican Party, and and how, uh, at the behest of at the behest of of well, the Israel pack really um they encourage people like mike enoch in this in this in this uh trump election the first one to actually start getting behind the republicans and something that was very contrived or it was very out of um very unusual for white advocates to do this and very suspicious um, that they were maneuvering, the, being maneuvered to ignore, you know, the obvious that that Trump was uh, dog whistling them to them mainly so that he could get, but being put in mainly so that he could undo the Iran deal, which and. Um, <laughs> so I mean, um, the, but the point is that they the, the whites used to be white nationalists used to be good this way. They knew that this two party system was a farce, in as much as it might pretend to serve their interests, because it do, it does not. Mm -hmm. And somehow, a lot of people got fooled.
uh, to become to put their faith in the Republicans again um, in the first Trump election, anyway. Mm -hmm. Which served it served well. It served Israel's interest. They got the Iran deal undone. That's what they wanted to do, and that's what they did by putting Trump in there. <laughs> There's a cure for every disease. You just have to, you know, once you once you acknowledge you're sick, then you might just go to the doctor. But I guess if you remain in denial, then um, you might just get sicker. Well, you know, the sickness of the the masses of whites. Uh, it's, it's suppose, caused by democracy. That is what I'm saying. It is caused by democracy. But you know, you guys seem to not, say not, no, 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 that, that. no, 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 no. Whether it's just a veneer of democracy it might be, uh, but no, that, that's not it. It's caused by the fact that uh, I've said this before that we have, you know, uh, right wing elitists and neoliberal elitists and regular liberals who are don't see themselves as accountable to our people as a group and they are being um, paid off in the case of the right wingers and uh, bribed with uh, license and licentiousness in the case of the liberals uh, and their irresponsibility and so, uh, and a large part, of, and but the fact remains that while they are, uh, they should be held to account, um, a large part of what's presenting that are your friends who set the agendas, take the initiatives, grease the palms, and that's not to say that these that uh, our people are not complicit. They are. They think that they they are uh, taking for granted their objective, uh, <laughs> the objectiveness of their uh, good fortune or the their uh, the payoffs, and. This is this is where the disease comes to comes in, and this the disease comes in uh, by means of uh, a lack of correction, a lack lack of return to health through homeostasis, and that's maintained by right wing right wing identity, which uh, which is um, impervious to correctivity because it sees itself as Beyond that, it sort of, it reacts rigidly uh, in pursuit of uh, pure warrant, and this rigidity is easily manipulated. As an example of the Azov Battalion manipulated, um, and uh, where not easily manipulated is easily infiltrated for its uh, the rational blindness of its of its purity spiral. For example. Uh, where it takes uh, Christianity to be the sign went on that therefore anybody can just join in our group, including including even the kosher folks. They could just all they have to do is convert to Christianity and they're one of us. And they uh, uh, that's why they, you know, well, Paul Godfrey and others will actually encourage. They always say they're against Christianity. No, not necessarily. They encourage it because it provides uh, a vulnerability. It provides a, um, a back door for infiltration, not just, of course, by uh, coach first, but by others to uh, subvert our organization. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's that's how um, this disease that you're talking about. Uh, gets in and, and doesn't get corrected and healed. Well, if you can't remove people that you in your from your party from your movement, then 
you, you, you don't have control over their behavior. Well, Jews actually can't even control who calls Well, that's right. We, we can't remove them. We can't, uh, we're not, we're prohibited from uh, organizing and unionizing. And part of what happened, part of the way they've done that is to have this campaign against the left because underneath the idea of the left in the depth grammar, as Wittgenstein called it, um, in the depth grammar is the concept of unionization, uh, social uh, coalition building of unions, social advocacy, and yeah, an organization. Uh, well, the, the rules are that are for that organization are genetics. Uh, you are European or you are not. Yeah, but, but you're, you're already infringing the rules, the current rules. But there are ways of yeah. getting around it. Well, if, if I mean, it depends, depends on what you, no, it depends on what you want to do. If, if I say that with the, you know, you're, you're going to accuse me of trying to expel the, the Jews, or uh, which, I'm, which I'm, is that's not what I'm proposing, uh, or killing people, or no, yeah, but but okay, you can people. say, oh, I, I don't mean to do that, but but then you you will no by, by, by your no. very proposal no. No. cause alarm bells to ring, and then you say, oh, well, you know, you, know, you know, they could have alarm bells, but but you know, I'm making it clear here that all we're doing is trying to organ, organize, curate, for lack of a better word, our yeah, but, genus, but, but our genus, our genus and, and, and species in order to look after it, in order to protect and uh, us and to... I know. I know and, and hold on, and to look after, and look, after, look, after, look after the maintenance of our particular kind. Yes, uh, I know. You're, you're only interested in white people. I understand. No, I'm not. All, no, I'm not. Not even... But, that's not, but white people that is not, haven't that, got a Claire, religion. Claire, that, Claire, that's not even true. But yes, I, 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 no, it is not true. Who, but what of course, religion they have? Claire, it's the, first, <coughs> Claire, it's the first. It is, of course, very legitimately my first concern because it is my people. But also, we are the ones who are under attack. We're the ones that that. Uh, that they're trying to say don't matter, you know, or that it was the ones who are having our borders opened and our boundaries open with anti-racism. So we have to we have to defend ourselves. And you know, we, I think that uh, Arthur Kemp was saying that uh, you know, it was citing the NASA project, which, which found that you know, we have to have like at least forty thousand people of a particular. Kind in order to uh, preserve it, to make sure that it doesn't uh, fall uh, to problems of inbreeding and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, maybe you think that's boring. It's not boring to me. No, but is, how, how are you going to get 40? people to do whatever you know it's crazy like well, it's not you know, it's not crazy claire that you, you're you're claire you don't you're, need to do any where are you put your 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 pushing me my uh, the boundaries again claire, no, you, 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 you're no, no 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 don't don't don't, 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 don't interrupt you, don't interrupt me claire these genetic tests ancestry.com extremely popular millions not it's not going to be a problem once we get past the the, the trivializing the, the the obstruction of trivial people. How are you going like, to get past it? It's going to happen. So it's, you're, just, you're, it's you're, just a matter of time because because, it, because it, it's common sense. It's practical. It makes sense. It's it's moral. Anybody can see that it's moral. You know. Just as you would want to protect uh, species, animal species, and the environment, and, and the rainforest, and the oceans, 
that we want to protect our particular kinds. It's nothing to do with hurting other people. And because we would not, not be, uh, you know, have our people going crazy with, uh, with anxiety and fear, they would be secure in their existence. Then they would be able to comfortable to uh, coordinate with others and say, oh, these people are nice too. Don't I like, aren't the Japanese lovely? We, you know, wouldn't it be nice if they survived too? Let's help them. So it's not, it's not, it's never been true that we don't care about others. Uh, you know, oh, look at the Kung Bushmen, the oldest people in the world. How lovely. Let's make sure that they uh, are not, uh, or, oh, isn't it ha horrible what happened to the, uh, the Caribbean Indians, how the you know the uh, Spanish conquistadors forced them to intermarry with Africans, such that there's that there are no pure uh, Carib in Indians on certain uh, Caribbean islands. Well, let's let's try to fix that. So, so let, let me see if I understand you correctly. You're you're saying your your hope is to get forty thousand white people. No, 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 I no. Mean, no. What, what are you saying then? Don't watch on that. All I'm doing, all I hope to do, all I care to do, all I, all I see it as incumbent upon me to do is to promote this concept of uh, providing a concept of unionization and for the various categories of European genetics. And if other people want to, do, but hold on. If other people want to do it, if other people want to do it too, that's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be Europeans. They can, they can do it. Too. But I'm, I'm honestly concerned with, with the Europeans. And, uh, you know, this was one of the big, ridiculous. You asked me what Bowery said. His, 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 his objection, his objection to me. One of I've re I read this several times before, uh, earlier in the stream. Was, was that I was not providing a means for conflict uh, negotiation. And first of all, you know, which is irrelevant. You know, why he would, I tried to forefront him and why he would um, not participate and take a lead in this makes no sense. It's like, you know, he was saying that I have to provide a means of conflict negotiation. No, this is, what I'm doing here is organizing, first of all, who we are. Before we can talk about dealing with conflicts, we have to, or war for that matter. He says that I want a declaration of war, which he never said. We have to have, you know, we have to have a basis of who we are and how we're organized. And, and, and that's what I was attending to. And it's not incumbent upon me to provide a means of conflict negotiation that he deems satisfactory. I, I, I can and have come up with means for this. That's a part of my discipline, in fact. But, uh, you know, for him to, you, when I told you about the crazy objections to the DNA Nations project that I was up against, that's just one example. So it's like saying to me, uh, like, it's like I'm a, a concert violinist. And Bowery coming up to me and saying, until you show me that you can fix my car, I'm not going to allow you this, your orchestra to, to perform. It's totally absurd. It's a completely different thing. And if he wants to, if he thinks it's so important that conflict negotiation be uh, worked out, then he can do it. I'm not telling people to, to, look, to not look at his writings and thoughts and consider his thoughts. He, he can do it, and, and the same and the same goes with with uh, Kevin McDonald's objection. If he thinks that um, he, he, he's saying that, well, you, you are saying that um, you're going to offer a site for tabulating uh, signatories who come on who who sign up for the DNA Nations. <coughs> He could have, he could say we don't have that yet, but you know uh, we hope to. And well, by the way, audience, you might help us out to to work that out. Could have, he could have said that. I mean, these guys are not for some reason they they lack the uh, participatory element of 
praxis of social construction. Um, and it's absurd. Um, so, I mean, those, these are among the obstacles, which is, which is really the, the theme of this thread, is just the, you know, kind of um, uh, the ridiculousness of, of right wingers. Well, the, the well, that's, I suppose you could call them social misfits, who are not happy with the way things are because, well, they're at the bottom of the heap. No, good to Claire. Well, that's, like, that's why they're not happy. No, you're, you're doing the Luke Ford thing here. You're you're you're, you're de taking your the defender of uh, the elitist destruction. McDonald has been a a a career professional professor at uh, uh, in the university. Yeah, of he can't stop talking about Jews, so he can't done. I mean, you know, you can't everyone... stop talking about Jews. He made that a focus of his studies, and has done is correct to, to have done so. Um, he was not defeated in his arguments by uh, what's his name. The, the Jewish guy from Oxford, uh, who Luke Ford thinks is so great uh, at all. Who? I, I don't know. Um, what was his name again? Oh, the guy had perfect SATs or something. It was like, but it, his arguments were stupid. Um, I forgot his name. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten his name. Luke Ford thinks he's so great. He would. Um, no, he, he can't stop. He doesn't. He doesn't want to because he recognizes it's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Compass. No, Stephen St. James. Yeah, I think it's Jason. Is his first name? Uh, Confness. Jason Jordani or something. No, Confness. Come on, Jason Jordani. Oh, Wait, oh, right. Claire. <laughs> yeah, you. Stephen St. James, yes, Kaufness. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, no, and, and Bowery uh, would not, not be uh, accurate to call him uh, a loser either um, or disgruntled just because he was uh, is at the quote, bottom of the heap. Uh, this is ridiculous, Claire, to say that there are not uh, eminently legitimate grievances for the white people. We've been under attack. That is what anti-racism is about. It's it's uh, attacking people of European extraction wherever they are. <clears throat> yeah, you're, you're assuming it's the Jews who are attacking you. Yes, I, I get it. But you know, there are people. No, well, yeah. People, so. Uh huh? So some people don't agree. It's not mainstream. So that's why you're not getting any traction. There's a way of. Oh, Claire. Well, uh, you know, a lot, of, I, a lot of people agree. You know, just you know, I don't really. I'm not really focused and and uh, about who uh, doesn't agree and who doesn't understand. Uh, this whole project and the GNA Nations project makes that clear from the onset. It's one of the beauties of what we're doing. We are focused on what we can do, not what we can't do. We're focused on the people who want to participate. And that will happen. It's just a matter of time. Uh, and, and, and so, so your, your manifesto is what people, white people will, will do what? Oh, I'll, I'll read it again, the manifesto. Right. Okay, one second. It's only a thousand two hundred words. No, 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 don't, no, no. You just give me the link. I, I don't think I can. I, I am a little tired. Well, I, I would like the link. Uh, well, please. you can doze off while I read it, but I'm I'm going to read it again. Uh, where is it? Hold on. Here it comes. It's very nice. It was edited by Kevin McDonald. Even though Nathan Coffness doesn't like him. 
way back in 2012. I'm scrolling up, almost there. Okay, here it is. Version edited by Kevin McDonald in, in 2012, 1,200 words. <clears throat> Euro DNA Nation. James Bowery's Laboratory of the States platform proposes separatism through free choice as people may vote with their feet to establish human ecologies through controlled experimentation. The control would be established through freedom from association, that is, the freedom to not associate with others. However, under the current circumstances, efforts to instantiate these deliberately organized human ecologies are best conducted in an implicit manner. Indeed, under the current circumstances, they must be largely implicit. See note, see note one below. Ali suggests promoting abstract terms such as our valuation of freedom of choice. What he's doing there is, is um, holding our, uh, the, our liberal enemies up to their rule structure. They value uh, liberty and freedom of choice. So grant us freedom of choice to be, to associate with who we wish. Do you understand? Okay, now moving on. Later, the communities will be able to enforce explicit freedom of and from association rather than state-sized units. County-sized political units are apparently optimal, the sheriff and county being the most viable and manageable scale of organization in defense against the nation-state apparatus in its death throes. The right of dwelling, association, and doing business within a county is granted by consent of the people established in that particular county members would have the prerogative to deny association with anybody they deem unwanted. People who tried to impose themselves on that group and insisted upon violating their non-consent could be treated as serious criminal offenders. This freedom from association is corollary to individual freedom of choice and association. Bowery argues that strong valuation of freedom of choice is a distinctly white characteristic and therefore precious. I concur. He elaborates further that it is imperative to maintain the unique human ecologies that evolved with this white character of individual freedom of choice. I concur. This freely and deliberately chosen state county human ecology is very different from the deeply situated naturally evolving human ecologies of Europe and Russia, however, where our people have evolved over tens of thousands in relation to particular habitats. It is surely critical for us to maintain these ecologies as well. We would not want to be without either the freely chosen white state county-sized ecologies derived by choice within a lifespan, nor without the truly deep historical ecologies of our European and Russian nations. These are both goods that we would not, excuse me, these are both goods that we would want to maintain, and yet they are very different concerns. The task at hand for white nationalism is to coordinate them. We would not really want to give up either, but how to coordinate these two goods. This is where the Euro DNA nation, Euro DNA based nation, begins to look like a potential means of coordination, allowing for various expressions of our in white, allowing for various expressions of our native Europeans while never losing sight of their essence. Third crucial matter to coordinate. If a white nation is to have an economy big enough to fund a space program and other large projects, it is likely to need a size larger than the average state, let alone county, to provide for a sufficient economy. And if, as Connor adds, a white nation is to hold up to the growing power of China, it will need to be large. Thesis, the indigenous Euro DNA nation would provide a means for coordinating smaller white states counties, both freely chosen and those of deep historical evolution, while providing the means for pursuing its larger manifestations as well. Given the anti-white hegemony that whites are up against from above, along with the turmoil and throngs of anti-whites that are up against on all fronts, an endogenous approach is the most practical for the coordination of white separatism. 
By endogenous here, we mean from the inside out. That is, in proposing a white separatist nation, we should begin with those who would like to be a part of it first. Begin by focusing on what we can do as opposed to what we cannot do. It is endogenous also in that the nation is corporeal, literally of the people, their native European DNA being the prime criterion for inclusion. That would be in contrast, though not in opposition, to other white nation building efforts using an exogenous from the outside in approach, such as the Northwest Front. There are clear practical advantages of a, a native Euro DNA nation that begins as a formal declaration of a wish as confirmed by voluntary signatories. First, firstly, signing up would not, excuse me, firstly, signing up would only mean that one is expressing a wish to be part of a white separatism. It does not require relinquishing one's current citizenship. The indigenous Euro DNA nation focuses from the start on our most precious concern, our DNA, while not encumbering us with present obstacles to land situated nations. The Euro DNA nation would be non situated in the beginning and to some, uh, and to some extent always. However, DNA without land, without habitat indefinitely, would be problematic for a number of reasons. Therefore, it must be an objective of the Euro DNA nation to establish sacrosanct Euro DNA nations, lands, eventually. The plurality of lands is a deliberate usage. In fact, more safety and resources would be provided if these lands are non contiguous and dispersed throughout the world. Naturally, the white nation would seek to reestablish its traditional territories as white, particularly those in Europe but also in North America, South America, Russia, Australia, and New Zealand. Nevertheless, in not being strictly contingent upon obtaining land, the nation is rendered more flexible, and more practical, so that it can start with land claims of any size, even small claims. Once coordinated as such, its ultimate viability may strive to, to recover the largest land masses possible thinking about these issues first as a matter of coordination with Bowers Laboratory of the States platform. And in line with that, the DNA nation being freely chosen would allow people to select various native European subcategories if their DNA matches. Some distinct, some perhaps blended in the various ways and degrees, con considering the problem secondly in terms of how to coordinate uh, a white nation of the largest possible size. It provides a highly practical means to attain the goal of covering a protracted expanse as it is highly flexible in its ability to cover territory. Almost done. The DNA nation is also practical in that it does not require unnecessary risk and engagement on the part of participants. Signing up does not render one complicit with illegal activity of any kind. It only means an expressed wish for separatism from non-native Europeans and to be with persons of indigenous European extraction. Separatism is the first step, separatism is the ultimate aim, and separatism is always possible. If you wish to express a wish that you might one day be a part of the separate Euro DNA nation, you may sign up and specify particular categories as you wish. DNA proof will ultimately be required for consideration of membership. The native European DNA nation sign up along with its subcategories will be provided. Note one final paragraph, the freedom of and from association provided by the laboratory of the states counties uh, is conceived by Bowery to be an implicit choice. In his estimation, explicit whiteness does not work. Taking the example of the draconian legal constraints placed on American realtors by the Rumford Fair Housing Act regarding the mere mention of race to buyers and sellers, and sellers provides a certain example of how hazardous explicitness can be. However, the explicitness of the DNA registry does not contradict the implicitness strategy due to its being voluntary and not, re not representing a legal status, but rather an expression of a wish. Discretion is nevertheless advised. Okay, so that was it. Wake up. 
No, Claire left. <laughs> it just goes to show she she does not share our interests. If she, you know, people don't care about that. You know, they're just not uh, interested in our well-being. Claire dropped out. Well, good riddance. If you really cared about this, that this would be riveting to you. So there's the uh, link if anybody else wants to join. Otherwise, this might be a good place to adjourn pretty soon. Stephen St. James, James, thank you for popping by. I'm glad you can see that. Uh, now, I mentioned for your sake that there are several several people. Uh, Don't go, people. I'm just going to change my avatar. I have a few things to say. I'm afraid what Daniel was reading was so boring. I, I just... I didn't even get it after the second time of listening to him droning on. Um, but I, I feel I should defend myself against him saying that I don't care about white people because really secular Quranism is my thought present to white people. And this and the fact that I've been doing it for over a decade shows the commitment that I feel towards helping white people. But of course, Daniel will interpret it to be a hostile act. Uh, but, but really, I, I just shopped around for the best religion available with the best guide to humanity. I, I would use it for everyone, and indeed I do. I recommend global adoption of secular Quranism, secular Quranism with Chinese characteristics, secular Quranism with Russian characteristics and African and European characteristics, or even global characteristics. So this is what I in fact advocate. It would be the best religion because it's appealing to the most powerful deity conceivable, but it also allows whoever adopts it to keep their individuality. All the different nations of the world would, well, have their own way of interpreting these Quranic principles, which of course I will leave to them to decide how to interpret it. I know I have no control. Also, I have put it to Americans time and time again. You know, these Americans with their 50 states of America. And I repeatedly invite them to consider how Hawaiians would interpret secular Quranism to how Californians or New Mexicans or, well, anyone in any state of America that I have not mentioned. They will, I'm sure, interpret the verses of the Quran differently in these different United States. So I think I've made my point. I've won all the arguments. It's just that there are people who are too too mentally ill or learning disabled to understand my point. If you can't understand what I'm saying after all this time, you do suffer from a learning disability. And if you 
if you refuse to say to to acknowledge the truth of my arguments then you are suffering from a defect of character because obviously you won't admit it because your pride prevents you from acknowledging the error of your ancestors and your government and or if you inwardly agree with me then your fear of other your fear of islamophobes prevents you from publicly supporting me because I have had people privately saying to me that they agree with me, they understand what I'm saying, but they can't support me because, ooh, my family are Christian, my, my ancestors are Christian, and therefore I can't support you. And I'm saying, well, if that's the problem, then you have to say it is the problem, because if you can't say what the problem is, then you, you won't be able to solve your problem. So even if people don't listen to you, at least you are a bit further on in solving the problem. At least you, you said something, and, but you can always say later, ooh, well, I told them, but they wouldn't listen. So I know the problem with people like Connaught and Jay. They are atheists and they are nihilists and, and their way their modus operandi is, is to predict the future, right? They, they predict the future and then they, they, they make the decisions on their prediction of the probable outcome of something. So, so they've decided that um, even though I'm right about secular Quranism, I have no prospect of success and therefore they, they, won't, they won't support it because they don't want to be associated with failure and make sacrifices for for things that they don't predict will become successful. And, and that is precisely the problem, because what they are doing is, is operating on game theory. If you know anything about game theory, you will know that game theory is um, its participants predicting the outcome of a particular trial. Um, they will be pessimists. They will assume that people will you know, if, if there's sort of 10 people, then they'll have to, you know, predict how, how badly people will behave because not everybody will do what they're supposed to do. And um, so it will be a rush to the bottom because what they will do is, is predict that people will behave badly. And when they predict that people will behave badly, they will behave badly too. And um, yeah, so so you'll get to to the kind of society where, where everybody <laughs> will just do whatever they can, they think they can get away with and, and you will eventually have a failed state. But, but because people like Jay, people like Connaught are fundamentally atheists, they're, they're perfectly happy to pretend to believe in things that they don't believe in and be silent about the truth that they know will cost them if they speak it. And that is why I have no respect for these men who do not know the purpose of masculinity because the whole purpose of being men is to defend things such as territory and women and principles and they are now to sunk in their moral squalor that they dare not speak the truth. And when they encounter somebody who speaks the truth, they will throw rocks at them, even though they know that that person is speaking the truth because they prefer to join the majority who are as uh, immoral and corrupt as they are. And they are therefore moral vandals and um, really, should not should not should not be taken seriously about anything they say. So in my in my social system, people would be divided into different groups. Daniel and I discussed, you know, dividing people into groups, and this is actually what I propose to do. Um, they can you know, 
they would be divided into the five major religions and, and then um, and then they'll be, be divided into um, the atheist and agnostics group and they will be expected to um, fill in their moral group when they go for job applications. That's my plan. That's my proposal. And, and guess what employers are going to do? Who, who do you think the, the employers will hire if they want to, you know, honest people who are not going to be unmarried parents and certainly not unmarried mothers? Do you think they're going to choose a, the atheist and, and agnostics group? Or are they going to choose Muslims whom these atheists and not agnostics are supposed to hate? So these nationalists who hate Jews and who hate Muslims, they're not Christians, right? Okay, they, they might they might join the Christian group because you know they, they can't, you know, they can't see themselves joining the Hindu group or the Buddhist group. And they know that, you know, if they join the agnostics and an atheist group, they, they will be low status and they won't get any job because they'll be assumed to be, you know, bad parents or the people most likely to become unmarried parents and certainly unmarried mothers or come from that sort of background. It's so easy. I've really solved all your problems. But you won't talk about it because you're scared, right? You're scared. You're scared of my ideas that would instantly solve your problems or because you are corrupt, hypocritical, cowardly, suffering from a learning disability or a character de defect or a mental health issue. That's the, that's the sum of it all. So. What do you think these atheists and nihilists will do in order to avoid being, <laughs> in order to avoid being put in the lower status group of agnostics and atheists? I'll stay in that group. Don't worry, I'll stay in that group, you know, just to make a point. But what about people like Connors and, and Jay? Do you think they're going to be staying in that group with me? No, no. So, so which 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 group do you think Jay will will go? Now, let's assume that we'll we'll, we'll be you know tracking him throughout the years, and he can't escape from us and assume a different identity. Do you think he's going to be Christian or not? Do you think he's going to join the Christian group and and have us all follow him there and ask him about the Trinity and what he think whether he thinks. Jesus's mummy was a virgin when she gave birth to him. What do you think? What do you think he'll do? Being an atheist and a nihilist. What do you think he'll end up doing? Do you think he'll be do, do you think he'll join the Jewish group or the Hindu group or the Buddhist group? If he won't join the Christian group? Or the lower status group with the which is the group of atheists and agnostics? The easiest thing to do would be to pretend to be Muslim, right? And, and, and then, of course, break all the rules because we know what Jay and Connops are like. So we know that I'm gaming them, right? I am gaming how they're going to behave under this system of putting people into their moral groups. And I'm saying people like Jay... People like Connops who are out and out Islamophobes will find themselves joining the Muslim group if it is a group that is mainstream and the group that is considered to be the most honest and fair dealing and conforming to the best standards of sexual morality 
they'd be joining that group. Of course, they'll be lying, you know, left, right and centre. And, but um, that's a group that they'll join. And the way to deal with these people is, you know, yes, so they'll be joining the Muslim group, but, but, you know, there'll be other Muslims who will notice, you know, when they tell lies, when they when they say, talk their nonsense and do all the things that will draw attention to respectable Muslims. So this is, how, this is how I propose to control, to measure the morality of individual citizens under my new state, under my proposed brave new world of measured morality. So thank you all for coming to, to um, ingest a bit of your daily Cavian wisdom. I know you, you don't think much of Daniel, but um, at least he's, he's sincere. He, he's really trying to help white people. And so am I, actually. I am trying to help white people. I think it's really sad that white people have no one to look after their interests. And I am looking after them, and that's why I propose to nurse them back to good moral health with my milk of secular Quranism. Thank you very much.